but if you approve it, uh, you would use uh, findings, our standard findings of fact, which were adopted in November of 2015. Uh, we would acknowledge that this is uh, listed use, and the uh, applicant made his application at the appropriate time for his property uh, that this boathouse within 50 feet of the high water mark, as I said, is allowable and it would not adversely affect the public interest. And I'm, I don't see any conditions that we would specifically need to add. I guess one point, if you're looking for any direction out of me from staff, uh, again, ingress, egress, lighting, uh, trash, utilities, those are the things that we consider with a conditional use permit request. I see nothing based on the proposed location of where he's going to be, where he's going to have a problem with those things. I did have one individual contact me wondering information, but you can see um, with the trees that are located here, uh, they're established trees. They'll likely cover the shed. How far back from the high water mark is the boathouse going to be? 30 feet. About the location, you see this uh, uh, this X here, and uh, Tim's here. If uh, to prove me wrong, if I am wrong, I'm not 100% sure that that's the right spot. But it remains the property remains pretty flat from about you know, there's probably about two feet of grade from here to here, and then about seven feet from here up to here is. Is that a boathouse in the adjacent lot there? Um, which one are you talking about? That one. This one? Uh, there isn't one there. What's that shed? Is that the house there? This nope. is the house here. That's the, that's the main house. There's their shed up there. Okay. Yeah. Okay, are you complete? I am. Okay, is Mr. Cruz in the audience? Uh, yes, ma'am. Can you step up to the mic for just a second? We've heard from Luke. Is there anything you can add in your own words? Um, no, short of uh, the existing ve vegetation is the reason why I'm asking for that uh, conditional use permit. And also the elevation um, was checked, and it's actually about 10 feet uh, will be the back wall um, if I have to go further back. So that's why I'm moving closer to the lake, I guess. What is the dimensions of the building? Um, it's going to be 20 by 36 this be like steel siding uh, no it's actually um, it's gonna be a wood um, but most of it's gonna be below grade just because of that hill incline so you know it's gonna be wood and sided according to the house same siding okay board members any questions for mr. Cruz okay if you want to have a seat we'll okay. is there anyone else in the audience to wish to speak to this issue Anyone else? Okay, I'll close the public portion. Board members, questions, comments? Luke, uh, three out of five favorable votes to pass this? That's right. Uh, the, uh, as I, the zoning ordinance uh, does have uh, a couple of uses that are listed there, just simple majority for conditional uses. This is one of them. Okay. Luke, are you acting secretary? Are you going to call the roll? Thanks for the reminder. Yes, I am. Okay. Uh, Arnold. Yes. Shriver. Yes. Hanton. Yes. O'Neill. Yes. Fox. Yes. That's five yes, zero no. That motion passes. It does. Okay, since I wasn't at the last meeting and stumbled all over the first one, Luke, what you're going to need on this one, then, is another motion to take this off the table? Yep, and that's it. Okay. Do we have that motion? By Dennis, do we have a second? Second. By Ms. Hanton. Okay, that item is in front of us. Luke, you, my understanding is the same as the other one. You had the motion. Uh, that's, that's correct. We, okay. should, we should quick do a voice vote on that to remove from the table. Okay. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? All right, now I'm there. This next application, uh, as was said, was tabled at the previous meeting. Um, it's, uh, it's an application, 
on to uh, have a contractor contractor yard and shop on property described as the east 1120 of the south 1625 of the southwest quarter less bones addition and less double t addition and last lot h2 in section 35 a lot of words to say just west of town uh half a mile west of uh ramcota or the old plateau i guess is what i'd think of uh, a little ways west of discount seeds in this uh green dot uh, just west of city limits and touching city limits the uh the applicant's requesting or sorry the applicant operates an excavation business and currently parks his equipment at various locations around town and is intending to level an area for gravel parking to place it, skid steer loaders excavators and graders uh, and intends to construct a barn on the property within five years with a long-range plan that would probably that would be to uh, um, subdivide the property but that's it sounds like it's a ways down the road I should note that this uh, the applicant uh, the applicant and the property owner are not one and the same. However, they did make application. They both signed this <coughs> application. The property zoned industrial in this joint jurisdiction area has been uh, since the 70s. It is located over the shallow aquifer. Uh, it's planned for future industrial growth within the city of Watertown's land use plan. I should note, typically land proposed to be changed from an agri agricultural use to more of a commercial use has been required to be annexed into city limits before a change in use. Uh, the board's going to need to determine whether this change in use warrants the need to annex before change, ultimately. Uh, the disturbance of more than one acre, for what it's worth, would require a storm stormwater permit from uh, DNR, and the applicant would need to verify that DOT will allow existing access to continue to be used for the proposed use. The, uh, we don't have specific requirements listed in the ordinance for contractor shops and yards in this area however in the past where we've had these uh, requests we have required uh, planting of at least two rows of five to seven foot tall evergreen trees spaced about 25 feet apart to screen any vehicles or equipment parked outside from the right away uh, we've said only vehicles and equipment associated with the business need to be uh, stored outside of course uh, all vehicles and equipment would need to be stored in neat rows no junk n no noxious weeds uh, if a building is built it would need to be built according to international building code and uh, any parking spaces for employees would have to be paved however i don't think that probably applies here in the end when you're voting here and i'll read through suggested findings and conditions in a minute but basically board for your information basically what you're going to be voting on to figure out is is this change in use significant enough to warrant the uh, um, warrant this property needing to be annexed before before this use comes yeah do we grant the conditional use without them being annexed or do we uh, require them to be annexed before this turns into this sort of a use uh, historically as I said any change in use to a more of a commercial or industrial has been required to be annexed we have done a couple of them where we have permitted them on the condition that they annex within a year uh, the most recent examples I can give you would be um, Strom Seth's property where there's a truck terminal out east of town on 31st the other example is just west of here you can barely see it on this map here right here we did the same thing we permitted a, a storage building there and they annexed within a year as well so that was those were the conditions that we had there where they're already adjacent to city limits the rest of them have been required to be annexed if um again the uh the board could of course deny table and approve the request if denied uh, it's likely you'd, you'd be using the findings um there would there would be that the uh proposed use could be accommodated within the city limit let's put it this way if if denied the uh the reasoning what possible reasoning unless you have a different one would be that the proposed use could be accommodated within city limits and may dilute municipal and commercial industrial districts and would be contrary to the land use plans in areas of development transition annexation of land adjacent to municipal corporate limits and sanitary sewers encouraged prior to development 
uh, commercial industrial development, which can be accommodated within towns, should be, and municipal commercial districts should be protected and should not be diluted by scattered commercial development. However, if approved, you do so stating that it meets the uh, requirements uh, in the industrial district here, uh, that it does meet the standard findings of fact, and that uh, contractor shops and yards are a listed use here, and that it would be required to uh, be operated with the following conditions. And of course, you can um, strike them as you deem fit, but I'm going to take you to those so that we can follow along. Suggested conditions would be that the applicant agrees to plant two to five rows, or sorry, two rows of five to seven foot tall evergreen space not more than 25 feet apart to screen any materials that would be stored outside from the east, south, and west. Any vehicles or equipment associated with the business would be allowed to be stored outside, of course. All vehicles and equipment stored outside would be stored in neat rows. All vehicles stored outside would be operable. There would be no junk stored outside. There would be no off-premise signs uh, or on-premise signage associated with the contractor's yard. The storage or equipment and materials will not be carried out in a manner which would create a breeding ground for rodents. Noxious weeds need to be controlled. The permit for a contractor's shop and yard would not be transferable. Subsequent owners would need to apply for another conditional use permit. Uh, the application would agree to annexation into the city of Watertown uh, at a point that you, this board would have to decide what the trigger mechanism would be for that, so I can write that in. Um, the two points into here as well that I've got highlighted uh, weren't on our report on our website, but applicant agrees to provide documentation from DOT verifying that they've reviewed and approved the access for the proposed property in use uh, and that any future structures shall be reviewed for compliance with restrictions on building height in reference to approach and runway protection zones given where it's at with the airport. And then lastly, we have our normal, um, if there's a violation, it would come back before this board. Sorry for the long introduction, but there are a lot of information there. Okay. Thank you, Luke. Uh, is Mr. Beld or someone representing him in the audience? Okay. Luke gave us the history. Is there anything you'd like to add for our knowledge? No, I, I think he pretty much covered it. I mean, I don't, I want to use it as a contractor's yard, parking equipment. In five years, I'd like to put up some kind of uh, well, he said it was a barn. It looked like a barn, but you would enter it from the back. It would be a heated shop. And um, I guess I, I would like to uh, clean it up a little more than it is, uh, but I do want to farm the majority of it. Okay. Lauren, um, I, one question. Lauren, where, where were you thinking? <coughs> were you just going to park stuff as close as you could or did you have an area there you were planning on leveling um and i i don't know how to show you the best this the best or? just a little corner didn't i have that in my well see i didn't see it in there that's what i was i had some i saw pictures. the building but i didn't see that i was just gonna here. if it is i had it all um, here. yeah i had it out. all here this is cruises here's yours <coughs> give me just a minute then i'll show it on here okay Oh, this area here? Yep. Okay. So the area proposed for the storage, for the vehicle storage, would be in the southeast, southwest corner of this property. Okay. okay. So from is that, Lauren, is that the uh, Gaylord Bone Farm? Is that where you're talking about that property right there? Yeah. So the southwest corner, do you have, is the house part <coughs> of it then where the house sits now? Just no, that, that's a, that would be right beside it. Just up to where the feed lot or the barn was where the cattle lot used to be yeah, up to that, that point. Yeah, concrete and them stumps and stuff, that's the area I want to use right now. Okay, yeah, there used to be a bunch of junk there and Still is. concrete, but yeah, yeah, okay. Mr. Bell, approximately how many acres are we talking about here? In the I believe it's 24. 
24. Before we had joint jurisdiction with the city of Watertown, I know the county, correct me look if I'm wrong, this is bordered on three sides by a city? Two. Two sides. South okay. and east. Okay. In the past, the county would have probably asked that you annex this to the city. I mean, it was just kind of a, a working relationship with the city before we had joint jurisdiction. Uh, is there any reason you would not want to enter the city? Uh, mostly I don't understand. I just don't want to pay a bunch of extra money right now. I don't have it on hand. Okay. Anything else you'd like to add? Eventually I do want to annex into the city and I do want to develop it, put in water and sewer. Okay. Um, just don't have them. I don't know what it would take for money, but I don't have enough money to develop it. I do know that. Okay. Anything else? No. Okay. I'll ask if there's anybody else in the audience wish to speak to this issue? Okay, Mr. Bell, if you want to have a seat, we'll let somebody else have the microphone. Just state your name for us, please. I'm Ruth Haugrud. My husband and I own the Gaylord Bone Farm that Dennis alluded to. We're right adjacent to this property, so we just would like to be informed as to if any impact that would have on our property if Lauren is allowed to uh, develop this land then does that impact us at all as far as our driveway would he have to um, create his own access to that property that he is looking at purchasing Okay, Luke, you can answer most of those questions. That is a really good question in reference to the property uh, that they have because there is there is an agreement on file as well about... Uh, I'm going to pull the aerial onto here quick so that we can look at this. Um, part of this question, I'm betting, comes from... Um, there is a portion of an agreement that that indicates that eventually this this road may have to come through and across and i think that's probably a part of the question Correct. for one of the one of the uh, primary reasons that i had added in there that a condition of approval would need to be that that um highway access be verified by the state is because of that right now direct access to this property is is given by these two approaches these crossings and I actually the previous let's see here the presentation um, let's go to here these two pictures were taken from those two approaches this one here is from the east approach that I had shown and this one here is from the west approach that I had shown so those two approaches east of your place um, right now that is the expected location of access However, we would need verification from the state before he could start pulling stuff out to there that he does have access at those locations. Because anytime a use changes, they need to review access and they'll either tell him this is not a change in use or else we need to look at it. And we just need to know what that conversation is. So the, the, the drive, I don't know. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Okay. The driveway that you use to get to the house, is that west of the property line, your property and, and the proposed property the Lord wants to buy yes yes it is okay one of the concerns to ev for everyone involved here is that uh, in all likelihood I, in in you planning board you've done this before you know that eventually when the state gets involved in here eventually they're gonna say at least one of these is probably gonna have to go at some point in the future and so we just need to know when that is and I'm like I said I'm sure that's a part of their concern as well because it is likely that one of those answers in fact the last time we had this conversation with the state the long-term answer if the if there does need to be access for multiple for anything over here it would involve extending this road across which obviously that's a big deal for their house yeah it was our it was our understanding when we bought the property that we own now that unless we decided to change that to a commercial property would be the only reason that that access road would need to be changed to run in front of or, or virtually right 
beside our house. And that's what the stands now. That's a good point. That's what the agreement was at the time that that property was platted, and that was struck. The state of South Dakota reviewed that as well. So there is the east approach, which would be on the proposed property we're discussing here. That evidently was put in when the highway was widened, but we don't know. Nobody knows, or in the Lauren, maybe that's a question you have used research buying this property, but. Is that access for you listed? I mean, is that an access you're planning on being able to use? Mr. Bell? Can you put your pointer on that east access? Is that the access that's being used that, right now to get to it? That I was told that they, we would use would be the one that goes to the house. We have to share that driveway and take the other two out. Can I ask who told you that? Realtor. How far is it? Is is does his land spread 550 feet from that access? That's the normal width of a DOT access. They don't put them within 550 feet of each other. So how far east of that existing driveway is his lot line? East of the existing driveway? Yeah, oh. correct. From there, go all the way east to the edge of his property line. To the east edge. Yeah, I just talked to the DOT on a. On an area, and they said 550 is the minimum distance between approaches. I was just curious if that's over 550. All right, I'll use GIS instead. Where's your measuring tool, Jill? Here it is. From here to here is 700 feet. And that's a DOT <laughs> permit, but he's well over the 550 that the DOT generally uses as a rule of thumb. But it does sometimes depend on how they've got it classified as well. What is the use of the property right to the east of it? This one here? Yeah. That's, pro that's property currently owned by the county. Uh, right now it's nothing uh, it was at one time proposed site of the justice center <clears throat> okay ma'am do you have anything else to add or a question to ask i guess that's all for now okay just to is there anyone else in this audience who wishes to speak to this particular issue tonight or this afternoon Okay, I'll close the public portion of the hearing. Luke, I have a question. The verbiage on uh, F, number one, the applicant agrees to plant two rows, five to seven foot evergreen space, not more than 25 feet apart. That's pretty common language in the county. Mm -hmm. uh, here, if he plans to develop that in the future, what are his setbacks from the property lines to put those trees? Uh, that is a good point. We would... Uh, this board could specify where they would need to be put, as in if, if we were going to allow him to be closer than 150 feet to the south line, but our uh, ordinance does say 150 feet from the south property mm -hmm. line, from the road right away. And as far as that goes, it would be on the, uh, on the west and east as well. However, again, this board does have the authority to say as a part of the plan that they're allowed to be closer. So, Luke, the county says 150 feet from the lot line for the trees? Yes. Where we say you can put them right on the lot line? Correct. Okay. Our reasoning out in the county pad is because of the wind. we got half a mile between. And our, our, our reasoning is to block them, yeah. <laughs> to block the view. <laughs> but, uh, we're <laughs> yeah, looking at it. That's, that's interesting because yeah. it, same, you know, we use them as a buffer mm -hmm. for visibility. Yeah. We don't want them too close for yeah. snow removal, blocking a road. Okay, board members, other questions, comments? Dennis and I had talked a little bit about it earlier, and the, our, my thought was, my original thought was it's 24 acres. It's used mostly as ag land. Uh, as far as the annexation of bringing it in or out of the city, I thought it'd be more, it would apply more at the time of a building permit. You know, we're gonna look at it. When a building permit is issued, pulled from the city we're going to look at 
hard surfacing, access, ingress, egress, things like that. My thought was we wouldn't, is it from from a city standpoint, I didn't have a problem with it being left as it is in the county until the time of permit. The only question I had is do we say um, he, ha he has to annex it into the city at the time that the building permit's going to be applied or do you put a, a time uh, or five years? You know, when, when they say I'm going to put up a building in five years, that's a lot of time. Normally, we'll let them do things and then they have to annex in within a year after we give them a building permit. You guys give them a building permit on those other two instances that after a year they had to annex in. Five years is such a long range out. I don't know if we want to handcuff him to five years that he has to annex in or if we just say to the building permit. As far as the stipulations, the A through G, um, those all made sense to us. That's what we would ask for anyway and then have him annex in. And, you know, it may never, it may not annex in for a while. It, it might go to, you want to, might want to put something different than an industrial use there at that time. Your thought, Dennis? Yeah, I, that's what Pat and I discussed. The, and for the sake of maybe re reiterating what he just said, I, I believe once Mr. Bell comes in and requests a building permit to do something, then a lot of other things trigger. And I think the annexation would come at the same time then, just to take that piece of property and develop and clean it up and park some equipment in there following these guidelines. I don't feel it would need to be annexed into the city at this time. Number one under F, I question a little bit too, because if, if and when the time did come that he annexed into the city, those trees would probably all get destroyed. We could put them in there now at 25 feet and then whether it's two years or five years or seven years, you have to dig them all out, tear them all out. So if, if we were going to require trees to be planted at this time, I don't, I wouldn't require that. I wouldn't be in favor of saying 25 feet. I think the buffer is good, but the 25 feet, I'm afraid, would be a waste of money. One other thing, five years, um, no matter when he does it, whether he does it next summer, times are good, or times really get tough, and he can't do it for seven years. The point is. I don't think we need to say five years or three years or seven years. I think it's when he comes in to request a building permit, then all these other things kick into place. That's what I would feel. Okay. Brenda, anything? I guess typically um, from the county side, we don't allow this sort of request or we haven't in the past isn't that correct Luke yeah generally generally we would we would call this a industrial use and in where it's close to city limits I mean well typically typically the county has has funneled commercial industrial uses into town is the bottom line um, part of the reason is to make sure that things don't spiral and get get uh, get harder to control um, there are some contractor shops yards around city limits that aren't in city limits that have done that in the past I don't really expect that to happen to Mr. Beld here um, but uh, that's one of the things the other thing we do have to keep in mind is as we do this to make sure that we're okay with that sort of thing going into the future with with uh, other properties as they get close if there's a similar idea I know there's a property that's surrounded by city limits just to the east of here that has um, power lines over the top of it that would make pretty good sense to do something similar and so again we keep in mind that someone has to do this we we need to be consistent that's the main thing uh, so again back to what we've done and yeah, typically we haven't um, we've typically just had a time frame um, if if we're more comfortable with a different trigger mechanism that's fine okay I'll just follow up a little bit on what Brendan and Luke have been talking about for with the city gentleman here Part of the reason the county, when something is this close to the city or is partly surrounded by the city, that the county has pretty much encouraged them just to go into the city is because we don't want, and I'm not referring to Mr. Bell particularly, but we don't want situations where all of a sudden we have people wanting to stay just outside of the city limits to avoid the taxes and to avoid other issues and then hope that they get grandfathered in someday with some things that aren't compliant with what the city may may require now we're talking just a lot here to store machinery on but we set a precedent then 
that, okay, just on the edge of the city, you can start doing these kinds of things, and the county is okay with that. Where in the past, the county has looked at it and said, no, someday you're going to be in the city. Go ahead and join the city today and build to their standards and to their requirements. And that's just but, kind of the agreement, working agreement we've had. Uh, let me go to Mark first, please. Okay. Mark, do you have anything to I guess I'm kind of, uh, I guess I'm kind of in a toss up right now because, like I said, we've always handed this over to the city, and I guess I'm, uh, Luke. I guess you're going to have to clarify because I'm still confused. I mean, is he going to have to use uh, that west approach? I mean, or uh, can we? I guess I'm not comfortable in having him use that west approach. I'd like to really find out if he can use that east approach. So he's not, you know, using somebody else's because he's going to have to go across their land to get into his, even though it's a small amount. Yeah, and off the top of my head, I, that's going to be entirely controlled by the state as to how how they would handle that. It is possible that they would have to share that that west access that's on that property and go across on an easement. But again, that's it's also possible that they may say this isn't a significant change in use either. I, I don't know what they'll wind up saying on it. So I'm afraid I can't answer that. How long does it usually take to get a decision like that out of the state? Uh, I don't think it usually takes all that long with, because that's the question that can be answered here at this local office. But I will also say that for what it's worth, I mean, Mr. Beld's been told that he should expect that he's going to be using um, this approach, not these. So I, best available data at this time is that's what's going to happen. I don't know if this is in relation to what you were talking about with the approach, but the county did put an application into the DOT for that property because we would need a separate access as well. It, it, it was a little more process for that. I don't know. We never really did here because it kind of got dropped with the whole um, vote or whatever, but it does need to go beyond this office for that particular access and it had to go to the state board so mm -hmm. it, the, it wasn't done locally or wasn't able to be done here locally part of the reason on that one was that there was a street involved in that one as well if i remember right but again it's not here we'll put it that way we're not it's not this body okay dennis <clears throat> i have a question first and a comment but has the county dealt with this in other situations where someone just wanted to utilize a piece of property and was not requesting to put any kind of a structure up because uh, going to back to brenda which well both several of you both of you said i could go I back guess, to the piece of property right north of me can't think of his name at the moment uh 18 nelson. acres 18 acres nelson yeah right on highway 81 going towards the interstate there and he wanted to do industrial type uses on that and we denied him multiple times Mm -hmm. on that piece of property for for a building or just to utilize it to utilize it for anything other than ag because he wanted to do different commercial he wanted to sell like used farm machinery there start an auction okay. different things like that okay well maybe you've partly answered my question or my comment uh, might be affected by your answer here but what I was what I was trying to in my own mind say what would be the difference if the farmer next door wanted to park his four-wheel drive tractor there and a couple of discs and things which which they could do versus Mr. Bell parking a couple of pieces of construction equipment there. Because it goes from ag to industrial use. Mm -hmm. And that's part of the reason, let me just back up here, part of the reason these situations are probably dealt with better in the city is because you have better regulations to control if they get out of hand. Out in the country we have some farmsteads that are absolutely beautiful we have some that don't take care of their property. It's hard to get after one and not get after all. Where we have one right on 19th Street that's been a problem, it's in the county, and uh, it could be dealt with better in the city. You have better regulations to deal with that. Mm -hmm. That's part of the reason also. Any other questions or comments? Let me get us caught up on a motion that's there first, okay? Um, right now, unless someone uh, wants to specify differently, what we've got in there for conditions 
on it would be, as of now, and someone could certainly change this, applicant agrees to plant two rows of five to seven foot evergreen space not more than 25 feet apart to screen materials stored from the east, south, and west. Uh, only vehicles associated with this business would be allowed on the site. All vehicles and equipment stored outside are in neat rows. rows. All vehicles stored outside shall be uh, operable. There will be no junk stored outside, no off or on-premise signage associated with this permit. Storage of equipment and materials will not be carried out in a manner which creates breeding grounds for rodents. Um, the permit is not transferable. I'm not going to read these word for word. Uh, the, the blank that I asked you to fill in earlier, the applicant agrees to annex into the city of Watertown upon application for a building permit on this property. Um, that was a blank I asked you to fill in. That's what I hear. Um, and then when the property is annexed, the applicant agrees to abide by the city's rules at the time with regard to connection to sewer, paving, that sort of thing. Applicant agrees to provide documentation from DOT verifying that they have reviewed and approved of the access uh, wherever that access is for the property. Uh, any future structures shall be reviewed for compliance with restrictions on building height and reference to approach and runway zones. Uh, those are the conditions. I would ask for clarification before a vote um, where trees would be suggested or allowed, if they'd be allowed right up to property lines, or if you would expect them to be 150 feet off or somewhere in between. My suggestion would be um, on the south, between 80 and 100 feet from the right-of-way line because the long-term plan would be to have um, this service road is likely to come through long-term, and so it would be only wisest to keep those trees off of that right-of-way by that far so we don't actually have to just plan on tearing them out, so at least there's a chance they'll stay. On the west, um, I I don't know why they couldn't go up close to the property line unless the neighbors have a concern with that. Okay, let's deal with that one first. Uh, Dennis, you were the initial person who mentioned trees. Do you have thoughts on this? You try to look at both sides. You try to look at the county side and try to look at the city side. That's, That's why what, this is interesting. <laughs> yeah, this one, this makes this one interesting. We haven't quite most of these up to this point. The joint jurisdiction are very pretty easy, but this is a little bit more difficult. You're welcome for this, by the way. <laughs> yeah, um, certainly on the east and the west side, I, I don't see any pr reason with the trees being closer to the property line. We've got both property owners here. We've got the county here, and we've got the people that live on the west side. I would think a buffer for them would be an advantage either ways. So I think the property line or close to the property line would be fine. Um, <clears throat> before I answer the south, let me go back to asking the county a question. When, when the um, building that the county is proposing, what do you, uh, the, uh, the jail, slipped my name, the, the term you put on it, yeah. At that time, you, were, you said you were talking to DOT. Was it proposed that that service road would have been put in at that time? Was that being discussed along with everything else? Because I know you were quite a ways down the road in, in those discussions. Because um, that affects where these trees would go. Right. You mean the service road coming from the west? From the west, that yeah. That was never mentioned, I guess. We were more looking for our own direct access off from 212 to move one of those access points over. That we would okay. have to access in, and then, yeah, we would have uh, developed a road up to that and then went in. So that wasn't ever mentioned. Okay. And you do make a good point, Dennis. In in theory, you could see, you could in the future see this lot split to which access to this side would wind up coming from here and access to this side would come from here. That could happen. Mm -hmm. um, so that would allow more to the south too. And I just, my thought was that, you know, we keep it out of out of that first 80 feet because that's how wide this easement, this road is here. Uh, we keep it out of there just to make sure. But that's, that's a it, good point. That could happen. And everybody's a little different, but if they were going to bring in a, a chunk of that ground, it probably, say probably may not be 24 acres it very likely would be a smaller portion that they wanted to develop and bring into the city. Because mm -hmm. Luke, correct me if I'm wrong, if we, if we have him annex it in, he's going to have to plat it 
and break it up. It's 24 acres, and it, at this point, he doesn't even know where his building's going to be into the future, but we're going to ask him to annex it in, zone it, plat it, and establish lot lines, which it's virtual guess for him right now. My understanding is that he could annex the full 24-acre legal description without platting, though I'm not 100% sure on that in the past. I know that you have annexed some legal descriptions, but... Of which 20 acres is probably going to be hay ground. Exactly. That's true. To be fair, we do have people sitting in front of you who have annexed land for similar reasons, but that is true, is that it would be... Most of it would not be industrial. So it could technically be annexed in. The majority of it stay as ag ground? Correct. And then only the portion that he would say put a hard or a gravel surface or something on the park as equipment, however he surfaces it, that portion would be industrial or what? Well, that's correct. I think that, I think that the point that Pat is making, though, is that if – if they only take a chunk of this into city limits, then it does need to be platted. And then we're talking about all the subdivision requirements. But they can take it in as legal description. Yeah. The adjacent zoning in the city is industrial? Industrial. To the south and west. So we wouldn't need to change from ag to industrial if he just brought it in as ag? And he could park machinery in there, even though it's in the city limits? I don't know the answer to that. I, I believe it would have to be industrial. <laughs> Jill, well, do you know, would that be would that be considered a contractor shot, contractor yard if they're parking excavation equipment out there? But it would be a contractor yard. There'd be no shop with it at the front end. Well, would it be allowed in the Ag District? The city actually has an Ag District. Yeah. Well, the uh, Ag District has agricultural activities and related farm buildings. Um, otherwise, as far as industrial type uses, it doesn't really, it doesn't have contractor shops. Or yards. Or yards. So it would have to be zoned industrial in the city. Okay. To try and bring this meeting together here, uh, Dennis, you started down the road on the trees. Are you able to make a motion? So we can so we'll amend our original motion if you have a, something on the trees. Sure, <laughs> if you would. I'll make a motion that we approve the request <coughs> to um, approve conditional use on this property for a contractor yard. Uh, I'm going to stop you for one second. I was asking just on the trees, just oh. on number one. Just on, on the F. trees. Just, yeah, just, just amend the, the tree. Okay. Just amend the tree We've got thing the rest for of now. Because we have the motion. Okay. I'm, okay. I w if you're so moved, we'll yep, no, shot we'll, the tree. That thing. would be an amendment then to the right. existing motion. Yeah, then. Right. Okay. Then I'd make a motion to amend the original motion to have the trees on the east and the west side be on the property line or just right inside the property line. And the trees on the south be, I think, Luke, you said 80 feet from the right of way. Mm -hmm. Okay, we have that motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. By Pat. Any other discussion from board members on the just the tree issue? It would be an amendment to the original motion. One point, sorry, um, Dennis, just to be clear, you had mentioned earlier about, about a few less trees. Um, are you planning on leaving it the way that it is, the two two rows, 25 feet apart? Oh, I don't remember. I don't remember saying less trees or fewer okay, trees. Okay, I didn't know. I if didn't I know. did, I didn't mean to okay, say that. So no, that. whatever the whatever the ordinance and this is what it states is what we have here. Okay, thanks. Just wanted to be clear. Okay, so in front of us is a amendment to the motion. Oh. Uh, put the trees on the east and west. 
close to the property line. South would be a setback of 80 feet from the right of way. Is that what you're referring to? Yeah, okay. That's what I have. Okay, Luke, would you call the roll, please? Uh, on the amendment, uh, Arnold. Yes. Uh, actually, hang on just a minute. We had a motion on that. I'm sorry, Dennis. We had a motion. I don't have a second down on that amendment, though. Pat. Pat, Pat did get it? Okay. Yeah. All right, Dennis said yes. Shriver. Yes. Uh, O'Neill. Yes. Hanton. Yes. Fox. Yes. Okay, that just needed a simple majority on the amendment, and it did pass five. Okay, so the amendment will pass. Now I want to go down, board members, to number 10. And it says the applicant agrees to annexation of the city of Watertown in connection to the city of Watertown sanitary sewer system and hereby waives the right to protest. And I'm not going to read it all either because it gets into the legal description. Is anybody moved to put a timeline on that? Basically, Mr. Chairman, uh, I think for, for procedural sake, we probably should have a formal motion to say what I had said earlier, which is at the time of a building permit uh, to amend that to say that uh, annexation would be required at uh, prior to issuance of any building permits on this property, uh, which is what was discussed there, and we probably should have a formal amendment just to that point, just to say that. For okay. letters 10 and 11 to specify that it be annexed upon or prior to issuing building permits. Okay, so where were we talking about annex in two years or five years? Uh, we had that discussion also. We were talking about a time frame, and I think the last conversation was at a building permit and I guess whoever wants to whoever throws it up yeah whoever makes the go. amendment okay goes. that's where I was going so where are the members sitting on this issue are you looking at a timeline or are you looking at at the issuance of a building permit I agree with the city I think we should go with an issuance of the building permit okay somebody want to put that in the motion of an amendment so move. I'll move that as an amendment to the motion. <laughs> and Dennis is going to second that, Luke. All right. Sounds good. Thank Do you. Do you want to read to us what you wrote down now as an amendment? <laughs> uh, the applicant will agree to annex prior to the issuance of any building permit. And that goes for... Um, applicant agrees to annex prior to the issuance of any building permit and waives the right to protest connection to city sewer at that time, um, if so needed. And um, applicant agrees, for number 11, applicant agrees to uh, annex prior to issuance of any building permits and agrees to meet all requirements of city of Watertown regarding pavement and parking and loading areas at the time of annexation. Okay, everybody understand? Yep. Okay, Luke, would you call the roll place on this amendment? Sure. Uh, O'Neill? Yes. Uh, Arnold? Yes. Hanton? Yes. Shriver? Yes. Fox? Yes. That's 5-0 on the amendment. Okay, now we have the main motion in front of us. One last time, any more discussion from the board members? I just have one thing, Bob, I guess typically, and I don't know if that is... Um, we usually put a number on certain things that are going to be left sit out. Isn't that correct? You know, if they're going to leave things sit out on a lot, is that something that we need to address at this point or not? We have, the county has on uh, home occupations and even in some commercial uh, businesses. I think I saw an individual here who was involved in that conversation a while back, but um, I'll leave that up to you if you want to specify a number or you just want to say we're okay as long as it's screened. Um, that's really up to you. That's what I was at, Brenda. I had thought about the number thing, too. We usually do in the county address that, but if it's screened properly, I'm not too concerned on this one. Along 212, for what it's worth, we have uh, Kine and Clark Electric, which was required to put up a fence if they were going to be storing stuff outside. They've done that. We have Grand Guard, not Grand Guard anymore. I think it's Atex Sewer, or Pro, I think is what it's called now. When they went up, we required um, two rows of five to seven foot tall evergreens, and we did not put a number because it was going to be screened. Mm -hmm. um, I will say in the Ag District, though, uh, it's pretty hard and fast. We do that in the Industrial District. If it is not screened, we usually put a, a number on them. 
That's the beauty of having the joint jurisdiction. We don't really interfere with our county regulations. Okay, anything else? Call the roll. Uh, Arnold. Yes. Shriver. Yes. Hanton. Yes. Uh, O'Neill. Yes. Fox. No. Uh, Just to break it up. That, <laughs> that motion had passed four yep. to one. That mess. We needed four on that one, and that will pass. Okay. okay. Luke, anything else for the good of this board? I do, fortunately or unfortunately, have one, one question of interpretation I wanted to run by you, and I appreciate the audience sticking around. Um, we uh, I had a question come up uh, just this week that uh, an individual was asking whether or not he could, on a Lake Park district, construct a... Um, construct a garage. It would, for all practical purposes, look like a residential storage garage. It's in the Lake Park District where um, accessory uses without a primary structure are not allowed. However, um, commercial storage buildings are uh, by conditional use. And the question is, you don't have to answer it right now, but I, I think what I was hoping is that I could have a decent idea as to uh, whether or not that answer, because as if you issue a conditional use permit, you have to decide whether you're empowered to issue a permit. And the only way you'd be empowered to issue a permit is if you feel like it meets the definition of a commercial storage building. So my question to you is, if an individual living across the road builds a, builds a um, garage on the other side, um, would that classify as commercial storage uh, or no? What size? It would be about the size of an individual, of a regular two to three stall garage. To store what? Uh, recreational vehicles, boat equipment. So where does it become commercial instead of personal? From the standpoint that uh, if someone offered him a wad of cash, he could... He could rent it to them just as easily as anyone else, as himself. I'm playing devil's advocate on both sides here, but... Then that's, then, then it's commercial. But if he's using it himself, it's private. What's the spirit and intent of commercial storage? One standalone building or... Spirit and intent would be more than more than one, I would imagine. But that's really why I'm asking you... I'm just the zoning officer. <laughs> I'm asking you what you would consider the spirit and intent. I don't have enough information. Okay. Dennis, anybody else got a thought on this? It is. I, I thought that if you had a firm gut reaction in one way or another, it would be interesting to know. Um, but I can't, I can't give you any specifics about property or anything like that because that would be getting into a request that we don't have. So you don't actually have an application? I think we probably will, but I kind of, kind of wanted to know um, that answer. I guess we'll give you an answer when we have an application. All right. Okay. Thank you. Anything else? Make a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Do we have a second? Second. By Mark. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Thank the city for their hospitality tonight. Okay, we'll take about just a couple minutes and we'll get the Board of Adjustment meeting underway.
All right, you can let me know when you're ready, Jill. <laughs> All right, thank you, Jill. I'd like to call to order the Thursday, October 6, 2016, Watertown Board of Adjustment meeting. Roll call, please. Shriver. Here. Arnold. Here. Hansen. Here. Stein. Yep. McGuire. Here. Stonebarger. Here. Dolly, Johnson, and Albertson are absent. We have a quorum. Thank you. Uh, First item on the agenda is the approval of the 922 minutes, which aren't ready, so we're going to skip item number one and go on to number two. Applicant Patricia Schwartz, permit number 17024, seeks a conditional use to operate a home daycare business in her uh, R3 multifamily residence at 818th Street Southwest. Yes, the applicant seeks to, to operate a home daycare business from her single-family dwelling property located in the R3 multifamily district pursuant to the terms of Section 21-20031 and 21-14031 and 5 and contingent upon compliance with Chapter 2170, which is home occupations, and specific rules governing conditional uses including but not limited to 210202 2B6A through H. A daycare home is a listed conditional use for the R3 multifamily to residential district per 21031 uh, and 2114031 and 5, as stated previously. Such facilities shall provide not less than 35 square feet of interior floor area and 50 square feet of outdoor recreation space for each child. In addition, such facilities shall supply adequate off-street parking or other suitable plan for the loading and unloading of children so as not to obstruct public streets or create other traffic or safety hazards. The applicant is regularly utilizing the main level of her 2,528 square foot single family dwelling for her daycare business. The property surpasses the minimum square footage of interior floor area and soon to be fenced outdoor recreation space required for 12 children per city ordinance 21-14031. Schwartz plans to be registered with the state. The applicant submitted a written, written request, site plan and floor plans which reflect compliance or non-compliance with the following terms of the ordinance. 210202 2B6 A through H are the specific rules governing individual conditional uses. That involves ingress and egress to the property, off street parking and loading, screening, buffering, signage, exterior lighting, required yards and open space, and general compatibility with the rest of the area. Those are the basic, basic requirements of meeting those for a conditional use. This property has an approximately 24 foot wide paved driveway parking area, allowing for a maximum of two legal off street parking spaces. The minimum number of legal sized and durable surfaced off street parking spaces required for just the single family dwelling use is two. This board may consider requiring additional compliant off street parking spaces as a condition of secondary use approval and to comply with 21-14031 for the safe loading and unloading of the children. Chapter 2170 is Home Occupations and Standards. Uh, we note that Schwartz has acknowledged by signature her assurance to comply. That is in your uh, packet. Uh, no signage is proposed at this time. Chapter 2163, Off-Street Parking and Loading Requirements and Engineering Design Standards. Uh, that I previously described. 2165, Outside Storage and Display Requirements for Specific Uses. I'm sure it will be typical to the average single-family dwelling. And 21, Chapter 2173, Landscape and Lighting Standards. Infrastructure is compliant. Boulevard trees um, are lacking. There's mature front yard trees very close to the sidewalk and probably not room to, to put in boulevard trees at this time. 
This board must determine if the request shows satisfactory provision and arrangement concerning Chapter 2170 Home Occupations and Standards, 210202 2B6A through H, specific rules governing individual conditional uses, and Chapters 2163, 65, and 73, as previously discussed. If endorsed, this board may consider imposing any conditions of approval deemed necessary for this secondary use, for example, additional parking spaces. Thank you. With that, I'll open the public hearing if anyone's here to speak on behalf or against the conditional use. Jill, have we, uh, I'll ask questions I always ask, have we checked with the fire department, the police department, any issues yes. whatsoever with the, with yes, the location? They, they are uh, good with it. Um, Chip has said, stated I, uh, that there will be smoke detectors installed. No complaints or anything from that address from the police department? Nope. Any comments from the neighbors? None. Uh, the applicant is here. I noticed you, you said she had agreed to put, has a time frame for fencing the backyard? Yes. Um, I believe this year yet. Um, state, state your name, please. Hi, I'm Patricia Schwartz. Um, yes, we, I had proposed in the letter that it would be finished in 2016. Um, Knowing that it's October, we're going to, you know, try to put a rush on it, but it may not be complete by the end of the year. So we'll do our best to do that. Thank you. When were you uh, planning on getting your license from the state? Um, that is the next step. Um, I think they have a 60-day um, process where once you turn in your application, uh, it's a 60-day turnaround time. Um, I have everything ready to go to send off to them. I was just waiting for your approval by the city. Is there any requirements by the state that uh, are in addition to what you're going to be doing here with your application? Nothing really in addition, just basic common sense things. Any other questions for the applicant? Anyone else uh, like to speak in the public hearing before I close it? Seeing none, I'll close for the public hearing and ask for a motion and a second for discussion. I'll make a motion. Motion by Mr. McGuire. Second. Second by Mr. Stonebarger. Any other discussion? Any questions? Seeing none, I'll ask for a vote. All in favor say aye. aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Item number three, applicant Cal Venjohn, permit number 17025 seeks a conditional use approval to operate a home based handyman blade sharpening business at 401 16th Street Northeast. Applicant seeks approval to operate a home-based handyman blade sharpening shop business from this single-family dwelling property located in the R1 single-family residential district. Pursuant to the terms of Section 2114035 and contingent upon compliance with Chapter 2170 Home Occupations and specific rules governing conditional uses including but not limited to 210202 2B6A through H. Home Occupations is a listed conditional use for the R1 single-family residential district per 2150. 14035 and in accordance with chapter 27 the definition of home occupation is that any occupation which is clearly secondary to the main use of the premises as a dwelling and does not change the character thereof or have any exterior evidence of such secondary use other than a non-illuminated sign not exceeding 400 square inches in area this occupation shall be carried on or conducted only by the members of a family residing in the dwelling the applicant submitted a written request, site plan, and floor plans, which reflect compliance or noncompliance with the following terms of the ordinance. 210202 2B6A through H, again, are specific rules governing individual conditional uses and generally include ingress and egress, off-street parking and loading, screening, buffering, signage, exterior, lighting, required yards, and open space, and general compatibility with the area. Uh, the site plan and written request are in your packet, so you can check that out for those items. Uh, chapter 2170, Home Occupations and Standards. Cal Van John proposes to utilize the single-family dwelling's 490-square-foot third garage stall for his business. He has acknowledged by signature his assurance to comply with Chapter 2170. Sean Lohr uh, Van, jo Van John currently utilizes 385 square feet of the single-family dwelling for her hair salon business. Uh, she, she has... Uh, previously gone through the conditional use process and was approved. Um, and I believe that was back in 
2012. So together they will utilize 16% of the single family dwelling for the business purposes. No signage is proposed at this time. Chapter 2163 off street parking and loading requirements and engineering design st standards. Uh, there sufficient area exists for at least three legal off street parking spaces. Chapter 2165 outside storage and display requirements for specific uses. Per 217002, no outdoor storage of equipment or materials used in the home occupation shall be permitted, and no public display of goods shall be allowed on the premises except inside the principal building. Chapter 2173, Landscape and Lighting Standards, property lacks the required boulevard trees and sidewalk, fulfill fulfillment of which may be considered as a condition of, of approval. This board must determine if the request shows satisfactory provision and arrangement concerning Chapter 2170, Home Occupations and Standards, 210202, 2B6, A through H, specific rules governing individual conditional uses in Chapters 2163, 65, and 73. If endorsed, this board may consider imposing any conditions of approval deemed necessary for this additional secondary use. Thank you, Jill. Uh, I'd like to open the public hearing if anyone's here to speak on behalf or against the conditional use. Is the applicant here? I believe they were. <laughs> I think they're gone. Jill, have you talked to the applicant? Uh, briefly. As far as, as far as everything has to be kept inside, he can't store anything outside? Because I notice it says handyman blade sharpening. He has signed the um, occupation standards that has the list of one through, I believe it's on the back of the letter in your packet, and he has signed and acknowledged compliance with those, all of those things. Oh, Cal Vinjan. Hi, Cal. It says handyman blade sharpening. Those are two different things. Yeah, two different things. The handyman, I'm not sure what. That's just if something comes up and somebody needs something fixed, I'll go out and fix it for them, change a the light bulb or do whatever. Uh, lawnmower sharpening thing, you know, Dale Rognes had the Business West Kemp there. He passed away, so I bought his equipment to sharpen lawnmower blades and knives. And Jill, this falls into the home occupation because anything it can be considered a home occupation as long as it doesn't alter the dwelling. In a sense, Pretty much. that's the way it, it sounds like. It's, there's it's not a permitted uses in a home occupation. Correct. It's there's just no, anything no that list. doesn't alter it. You don't have employees. You don't have any outside storage of any sort. As yes. long as it's not disruptive, noxious, etc., with noise. Yes, there's smell. no comprehensive list of what kinds of businesses we can have. You said you're going to put this in one of the stalls of your garage. Yeah, that the far stall. There's a, I think there's a drawing. We put an addition on about three years ago, and I use it as my Johnson Controls van right now. And like I said, I got two benches in there, and I just mounted some belt sand. So you don't you don't you don't use it for a, a garage per se now. Well, it is a garage right now. All right, but I mean for parking a car. Yeah, my vehicle. car, is, my Johnson okay. Controls van is in there. Okay, so where are you going to park your vehicle then when you put your handyman shop in there? there? That's deep enough that I can get a vehicle in there and a shop, or and two benches is all it is. It's just two benches. Uh, like I said, I mean, to sharpen lawnmower blades, you need about two little belt sanders and a grinder, and that's it. So, like I said, the equipment's already in there. I mean, it's, and there's... A vehicle in there and there's there's uh, grass uh, containers in there and garbage cans and I mean it's how deep is it it's probably 30 some feet deep so it's a uh, there's plenty of room in the front of that in the front of the vehicle to have my two little benches there so and like I said it right now I don't know I mean I'm retiring March 1st so I really don't know how much business I'm going to get. You know, she's been closed or Dale's been closed for almost a year. So, I mean, there's, you know, I don't know whether it's going to work or not. But I just thought I should approach the city before I did too much anyway. So, 
Anyone else have any questions for Mr. Van John? You look like you want to speak. <laughs> I'm just, uh, this diagram shows a, oh. a little highlighted area, which is his area that he's talking about, and this is the salon that his, his wife applied for in 2012. Okay. Thank you. Is anyone else here to speak in the public hearing? Seeing none, I'll close the public hearing and ask for a motion and a second for discussion. Motion by Mr. Stein. Second. Second by Mr. Hansen. Any other discussion? Any questions? Seeing none, I'll ask for a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Item number four, Applicant Prime Site Center LLC, permit number 17026, seeking a conditional use to serve for the sale, serving, and consumption of alcoholic beverages on a commercial property uh, located at 1923, 33, and 2013 Willow Creek Drive. Applicant seeks approval for the sale, serving, and consumption of alcoholic beverages at this property located in the C3 Highway Commercial, GT1 Gateway Overlay, and A1 Agricultural Districts, pursuant to Section 21-28033, Bar or Tavern, and con contingent upon compliance with specific rules governing individual con conditional uses, including but not limited to 210202-2B6A through H. Bar Tavern is a listed conditional use in the C3 Highway Commercial District per, per 2128033. -20 if approved, the tenant's leasing space in these buildings will apply to the City Council for both on-sale and off-sale alcoholic beverage licenses. Note that this is not required, note that it is not required that property approved under this conditional use permit reappear before this board for changes to their alcoholic beverage license. Location is usually uh, something that is considered in these types of conditional uses. However, the C3 Highway Commercial District is exempt from this section of the ordinance, so we don't need to consider that closeness to boys and girls clubs, things like that. The following requirements and regulations of the ordinance are to be considered for approval. Applicants submitted a written request, site plan, and floor plans, which reflect compliance or noncompliance with the following terms of the ordinance. Again, 210202, 2B6A through H, specific rules governing conditional uses, includes such things as ingress and egress to the property, off-street off -street parking, loading, screening, buffering, signage, exterior lighting, required yards and open space, and general compatibility with the rest of the neighborhood. According to the application, all signage will comply with the sign ordinance. Chapter 2154, the Gateway Overlay District, the property has been reviewed for compliance for, uh, with previous uh, building permits, and uh, the GT1 regulations uh, have passed with each building permit. They've been approved. Uh, chapter 2163, off-street parking and loading requirements and engineering design standards. Again, uh, the building in general complies with the parking re requirements. Chapter 2165, outside storage and display requirements for specific uses. This was not addressed necessarily in their site plan or their letter, uh, but we're, we assume it is typical to the nature of the C3 Highway Commercial District uh, for retail and service establishments, what they will do. Chapter 2173, landscape and lighting standards. Two things uh, I pulled out as not being addressed that you might want to uh, look into. Um, in their, in their submittal. Lighting and required screening of parking lot from adjacent residential, residentially used property is not addressed, and all outside dumpsters or other garbage receptacles on the site are required to be screened by an opaque fence or wall, according to our ordinance. This board must determine if satisfactory provision and arrangement has been made concerning 210202 2B6 A through H and chapters 2154, 63, 65, and 73 for such uses to be operated at this location. If indoors, staff rec recommends that the motion specify that approval is granted to the entire property or is limited to either the retail buildings, which would not include the car wash, or just the spaces or suites identified specifically. Joe, I have a question. You say motion to grant this uh, on sale and off sale liquor. Now, are we supposed to take it as the liquor store is just off sale and the hair salon are just on, uh, on sale? Or are we going to grant both to all three establishments? 
Actually, this board doesn't really decide. That's why I noted at the very beginning uh, that if if they change their liquor licenses, they don't have to reappear before this board. So this board has to kind of see this as a worst case scenario, if you want to call it that, okay. for, for all of these uses. Let's say they could all have off sale. They could all have, you know, serving and consumption. Um, if they are approved for this site for sale, serving, and consumption of alcoholic beverages. But their license can change over time. Okay, and if we grant this and the businesses change hands or change function, does that nullify this request or this grant? Not grant? typically. I suppose you could probably put that in a motion if you desired, but uh, typically it, it goes, it passes on as long as the use continues and doesn't lapse for a year. Historically, what we do is we approve the ground that's under it and that area, that zone. To give you an example of a restaurant changes hands, the conditional use to have alcohol on that premise is goes with the land, basically. But the owners of that business have to go to the city council for their, that's kind of our uh, stop you know, loss there. With the old Dairy Queen, when we granted that, that was if it changes use, then that uh, conditional use went away. Right. That probably was the only time we've ever done that. And that was because of the proximity to the residential mm -hmm. neighborhood. But you're right. We have done that one time and on there that we handcuffed that one a little tighter than okay, I was just normal. Curious. Jill, I had one question. Is there any, this is in the Gateway District. It's the first time we've crossed this in the Gateway District, which is when that was put together, it was put together a little tighter than some of the other districts. Uh, are there any stipulations in that Gateway District that they haven't, I thought I heard something on fencing or screening. Is there anything, stipulations in that Gateway District that they haven't uh, complied with to this point before we open any more up? The only thing that I'm aware of, each time a building permit has come in, has been um, submitted, it was reviewed at that time for uh, compliance with the ordinance with the Gateway District and C3. Um, the only thing that I'm aware of right now is the, the lack of screening on their dumpsters and other garbage receptacles and that um, because the area around them is developing, uh, fairly quickly into residential areas, uh, they have not addressed possible screening to basically the north. This this area here will be residential. I believe we have at least one house there or permit there to build. So it, it's possible that we could, um, that this board could look at requiring that screen to go up. Thank you. With that, I'll open the public hearing if anyone's here to speak on behalf or against the conditional use. Good evening. Uh, my name is Tyler Waldner, and I am here with Jerry Caulfield. He's a partner of mine in the development. And since we originally came in and put the plan together, the Space on the far, let's, on that picture there doesn't show the new addition to the building in between the car wash, but that 4,000 square feet, or 4,200 approximately, is going to be, uh, it's newly leased to a, a local business, a butcher shop, retail um, facility, Dakota Butcher, and he would like to use approximately 1,700 feet of that 4,200 for a coffee shop slash um, on sale beer wine facility consisting of you know roughly about three four tables something small and that that's his plan with that part of it he has since this application was submitted he has abandoned the idea of a liquor a liquor license for the time being um, the nail salon and the hair salon are simply looking to add customer ambiance and um, the ability to have bachelorette parties, um, 
things of that nature of the bigger events that come through there, things like that, to be able to serve a glass or two of wine with their um, nails, hair, whatever they're having done. Um, nothing, nothing that'll be a main focus of their business model. It's all secondary in nature. So, so going back to that 1923, there originally there was going to be an off-sale liquor store there, and now there's not. It, there will be just beer and wine, not the off-sale. Yep. Okay. Any questions for Mr. Walder? You know, in this case, I think we're looking at the building footprint on this. That's what they're asking for, not those individual units. Either either way, uh, we recommend not the entire property, but the two buildings that have the you know the request in for the the units or the specific units. If you decide you want to go that way. I think it'd be better to do the entire building. I would think a specific unit would that would require them to come back if they were to lease it to another place. I, I do agree that no, it doesn't make any sense to allow alcohol in the car wash. But you never know. <laughs> As a property owner, I <laughs> you know how long does it take to get through there? A couple beers. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, be wrecking stuff on your way out. Uh, anyone else here to speak in the public hearing for or against? Yep, come on up. Hi there, Brian Brandre. I own the uh, property on 19th Street named the Westminster Apartments, which is just north of this property. If we could put that on the map, please. I'm curious, um, the lot to the north of this, the car wash there, um, how that's zoned. I'm a little worried. I have a lot of uh, elderly tenants in uh, Westminster. The property right across the road from the Westminster, how is that zoned? Would this property uh, in question now, would it be uh, automatically, would it, I mean, could it automatically be a bar or a nightclub if this passes? Would, would you put your pointer on that? Yes. That no, the one, the one in question we're talking about tonight, that's the West. Okay, yeah. Would that automatically be a bar or nightclub if this passes this evening? It could. I mean, could it roll into that? I mean, I don't have a problem with that, this particular property, but the one across from the Westminster, if if this one passes, then could the next one pass, and then all of a sudden I have a nightclub across from my apartment complex? That's my question. In the C3 zone, a, a bar, restaurant, tavern is a conditional use. Like Mr. Stonebarger alluded to earlier, we had a, in the C3 where the old Dairy Queen is, that is also mm -hmm. C3 Highway Commercial. And when the, when they went before for the beer wine tavern that's where it got a little more tricky it wasn't hey you're on highway 212 just like everybody else and it is fair for them it's fair for you we were a little more stringent with the regulations as to what was going to go on there and how it could go on there because it was in close proximity to the r3 you know it, it's just purely you know speculation but if if that piece of property were to turn into a bar restaurant because it's close. You got R3 in the back and surrounded on three sides by a residential zone. I think it would be scrutinized a little closer than something on in the gateway zone or in Highway 212 or uptown. That seem logical? But yeah, I, like I said, I, I probably wouldn't, I wouldn't have a problem with footprinting those two buildings tonight, but as far as you know, would it be automatic, like the next person in line would, sure, we'll just hand them, them a, you know, I would hate to see something across the road from those apartments, but. But in answer to your original question, the property that we're talking about tonight, if we grant this and the city council can give a liquor license and it could turn into a bar in that area. Now, if the other property across from you, the C3, was proposed, then you'd have to come back and 
voice your concerns and we would hopefully handle it in a manner somewhat similar to Dairy Queen or whatever so we would regulate it tight enough so it doesn't turn into a bar that's open till one thirty sure. in the morning. Yeah, as long as we don't as long as they, the next owner there, I don't know who owns that one late with the C3 out there, as long as that isn't just automatically grandfathered in that this should just happen automatically, I guess I'm fine with this one. But Jill, one quick question. From an ordinance standpoint between here all the way through the city council, a nail salon that has a, a beer wine license to serve an occasional beer to a, to a client, can that property jump into a bar tavern without them going through any other hoops? Can they change the name for Oscar's Nail Salon to Shooters? They could without coming back to you, yes. Mm -hmm. it, it, can, it can be, you know, whatever the worst case scenario is in your mind. So it is a carte blanche from our side. Is there any other requirement for, for that? That owner would then have to go, the new owner. If, if they didn't change ownership, if the person who owned the nail salon now says, I'm going to turn it into a sports bar, would they have to go back before the city council for any other type of permit? Not to my knowledge. If, if they are serving, if they get the type of license that allows them to serve, I, I believe they're only going for beer, wine. So there's no usage. No. You know, the, the, no this verbiage of usage where we go in and say, we're okay with this property serving beer or wine. It's carte blanche. It's from an occasional beer while getting your hair cut to a bar open till 2 a.m. Yeah, I mean, if Oscar's Nails gets a beer wine license and they go from being a nail salon to just serving beer wine on a bar basis, they could do that without coming back. And that's where the location part of our job gets trickier, where you look and say it's on a, it's on a thoroughfare, it's running through there, versus when you, when you border up against a residential zone, which sooner or later the C3 does border up against a residential zone. Thank you. Anyone else to speak in the open? With that, I'll close the public hearing and ask for a motion and a second for discussion. I'd like to take a chance on the motion. I, I would like to vote to approve this motion with the caveat that they put a, like a six-foot privacy fence on the north side of their property to screen the dumpsters and hopefully try to keep down some noise if under some situation it does turn into a bar. Motion by Mr. Stoneberg. Do I have a second? I'll second. Second by Mr. Arnold. Uh, any further discussion? You know, I, I'm okay with all of it the way it is, but I do think we need to, from a staff standpoint, I'd like to possibly investigate a usage to this because we, we, we've gone from having bar tavern you know, to a restaurant that serves alcohol, to now you can get your hair cut and get alcohol. It's kind of, it's, it seems to, the times have broadened that out a little bit. And I think Mr. Brandreit brought up a good point where you say, you know, it makes sense for a nail salon. I don't have a problem with that. But then if it can turn into, like Jill said, the worst case scenario, there's no stop loss for us in there. I'd like to, uh, from the staff standpoint, to, to see what other towns are doing. And if we can give a conditional use based on usage. You know, I don't have a problem if a restaurant changes hands, it's a restaurant, but if a nail salon changes hands into a bar, that to me, that is a different usage and it would change that. It, you know, you don't wanna open up a Pandora's box, but this is my thought. I have a motion by Mr. Stonebarger, second by Mr. Arnold, any other discussion? Is that, is that something we can address in this motion? You could amend your, your motion if you wanted that you're, well, I think he's asking not, that's is not really could, could you for us so right those aren't that's another whole issue right but that doesn't We're mean that we can't, this. but that doesn't mean we can't we have the precedence of adding usage right in there before that if the usage yeah. changes if that the usage changes. yeah I would amend my motion to say that if the changes hands or changes function it should come back for further discussion I'm okay with him amending it yes okay, so I have amended motion by mr. Stonebar second by mr. Arnold and I think that's a fair thing since we are in the gateway overlay district where we've always been more careful in that district and this is the first
your wine alcohol we've put in there. And I do think it sets a little bit of a precedence that when we see the wide variety of this, that we, if the usage of the building changes in those spots, then they'll have to come back before and tell us what they're doing. So they switch from an ale shop to a whatever. To a bar. Or put a restaurant in there. So, uh, have, Is this also if it changes, transfers ownership then to it? I, yeah, I would say ownership or type of business. Okay. Okay, that was the in, the intent. Uh, any other, any other discussion? Seeing none, I'll ask for a, a vote. All in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed. Motion carries. Any old business, Jill? None. Well, before you close, Pat. Mm -hmm. So you you suggested staff look at that. Let's yeah, I, I think we can pursue. I think that you might want to tweak here. that ordinance a little bit. That gives us the leeway to to reconsider the conditional use if the usage changes. You know, you know right now, beer, wine is pretty broad usage. It, it's, yeah. it's detailed down a little more. So I think it gives us a chance to relook at something if, you know, we approve it based on a nail salon. and Because I never understood it else. that way. The one up on First Avenue North, uh, west of the guest house, the salon that went in there, you know, that was to serve wine, just like you're saying. But that could turn into something a whole lot more than what we thought we were approving that night. Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize that. But that's a lot, a little less problematic because of the location of it than, than, than this. Right, yeah. Especially and I think this is fine, what we're doing here. But, but if we could get the ordinance changed, then we could deal with those a little, a little better. All right, thank you. Any other, anything else? I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. Go ahead. A motion by Mr. Stein. Second by Mr. Stonebarg, all in favor say aye. Opposed, motion carries, we're adjourned.